Dr. Susan, we are live now. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, everyone on board. Joining us from India and abroad on this webinar series, lecture uh, nine. How do we imagine our world in 20 to 30 years? With a rising world population expected to reach 9 to 10 billion by 2050, according to United Nations projections, increasing demand for water, crops, healthcare, and energy are likely to stretch the resources of the planet, putting our fragile ecosystem under severe pressure. Therefore, a sustainable model for global development defined as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs has attracted. In this regard, nanotechnology has emerged as a versatile platform that could provide efficient, cost-effective, and environmentally accept acceptable solutions to the global sustainability challenges facing the society. Today, the talk on engineering at nanoscale, a strategy for developing high performance functional materials from agro waste is devoted to the utilization of nanotechnology to improve or achieve sustainable development in the field of healthcare. On this contest, on this occasion, let us look up to Almighty God for his grace and blessing on the earthling. Let us tune to Teri Aradhana song sung by Dr. Anida V.K. Anand, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, St. John's College, Agra. She 
for the beautiful song. Let me call upon our honorable and respected principal of St. John's College and uh, patron of this webinar, Professor S.P. Singh, sir, whose immense motivation and encouragement help us to reach a step up in this webinar ladder. To introduce the resource person, Professor Sabu Thomas, Vice Chancellor, Mahalma Gandhi University, Kerala, to our delegates, sir. Good afternoon. It is indeed a great pleasure and an opportunity for me to introduce the resource person of such an eminence as Professor Sabu Thomas, who is currently the Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University and Director, School of Energy Materials. He also is the Founder, Director and Professor of International and Inter-University Center for Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. He is also a full professor of polymer science and engineering at the School of Chemical Sciences of MG University, Kotayam. He has wide-ranging areas of research engagement, which include nanosciences, polymer sciences, and engineering, polymer, nanocomposites, elastomers, polymer blend, interpenetrating polymer networks, polymer membranes, green composites and nanocomposites, nanomedicine, and green nanotechnology. He has, his major contributions lie in the area of inventions in polymer nanocomposites polymer blends, green biotechnological and nano biomedical sciences, which have made transformative differences in the development of new materials for automotive space and electronic housing and biomedical fields. In collaboration with India's premier tire company, Apollo Tires, Professor Thomas's invented new high performance barrier rubber nanocomposite membranes for inner tubes and inner liners for tires he has been uh, awarded some eminent national and international awards he is a fellow of the royal society of chemistry london uh, he's a distinguished professorship from Joseph Stephen Institute, Slovenia, MRSI Medal, Nanotechno Tech Medal, CRSI Medal, Distinguished Faculty Award, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award for Scientific Excellence, he got in 2016, MG University Award for Outstanding Contribution which he received in November 2016, Lifetime Achievement Polymer Award in seven, and Sukumar Mathi Award as Polymer Researcher in the country. He is one of the most productive researchers in India and holds a position of number five awarded Senior Fulbright Fellowship to visit 20 universities in US and most productive faculty award in the domain of material sciences. There are numerous awards to his credit. Uh, I'll just mention a few of them. Uh, he received Professor CNR Rao Lecture Award and the title of Professor Lorraine for three years in the University of Lorraine in France. Very recently, he has been awarded the Fellowship of European Academy of Sciences and recently the Fellowship of International Academy of Physical Sciences and has been conferred Lifetime Achievement Award by 11th Conference, National Conference on Solid State Chemistry and Allied Areas. He was given honorary doctorate on Chris Gaza which was conferred by the University of South Brittany, Lorraine, France, uh, 
and University of Lorraine, Nancy Pram. Uh, he has published over 1,250 peer-reviewed research papers, reviews, and book chapters. He has co-edited 120 books uh, published by Royal Society of Chemistry, uh, Ville, Woodhead, Elsible, uh, CRC Press, Springer, and Nova, and so on. Uh, he has filed 16 patents, of which one has been granted. He has 101H index, which is highest in Kerala and fifth in India in engineering sciences. He has more than 47,000 citations to his credit. He has delivered over 300 plenary and inaugural sessions and invited lectures in national and international meetings over 30 countries. He's chief editor of Nano Structures and Nano Objects and Elsevier General Journal. Sir, it's indeed a pleasure to have a person of such an eminence among us. Uh, we are really honored that today, in spite of having such a busy schedule, you did manage some time to address to the faculty members, the students, and research scholars who have gathered from different locations to listen to you. Uh, on behalf of St. John's College, we extend you a very, very hearty welcome. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Professor S.P. Sikha, for introducing our distinguished resource person of the day, Professor Sabu Thomas, uh, Vice Chancellor of Mahalma Gandhi University, Patiam Kerala. Now, sir, over to you, over to Professor Sabu Thomas for his wonderful address. So very good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, sir. And uh, many thanks to uh, Dr. Singh, the principal of the college for the kind words of introduction. I am extremely fascinated to be in touch with Dr. Susan, a very, very active faculty member of Agra College, St. John's College. And she has been in touch with me for, for, for the last one year. And I'm glad that she's organizing so many webinars and meetings and workshops. So let us give a big clap to the principal as well as the, uh, the, the head of the Department of Chemistry, Dr. Susan. Thank you so much. And Dr. Susan indicated in the, in the beginning, Dr. Susan indicated rightly uh, the sustainability issues. Uh, ecosystem, sustainability, circular economy, uh, green materials. These are the slogans of the 21st century. We have to really preserve our ecosystem for the coming generations. The day before yesterday, I was listening to a talk by a professor from the University of North Carolina. He was talking about soil, the structure of soil, and consequently what is going to happen to the nations. He said soil is increasingly polluted. And the essence of his talk was sustainable soil preservation in agriculture. So if you all look at the title of my presentation, you can see that the title of the presentation is Engineering and the Nanoscale. Engineering and the Nanoscale, a strategy for developing high performance functional materials from agricultural waste. So this is a sort of circular economy. We have to utilize the waste that we get from the agriculture. There is nothing but biomass. So biomass is one of the important starting materials for the manufacturing of advanced smoking materials. That is a sense of it. So how do we utilize the biomass for the production of functional advanced materials? Yes, sir. There is a slight problem in your audio, I think. Ah, I see. The screen Some... is 
quite visible. Quite, quite visible. Okay, okay. Yes, so there is some trouble with the audio. Can you hear me now? Yes. Slight, slight vibrations are there, sir. Okay. 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 So if you look at the if you look at the uh, the agro waste, 1.6 billion tons of agro waste is being accumulated every year around the globe. So you look at the agro waste, agricultural waste, you know, being piled up. Look at the fish industry, a lot of fish waste. So we have to utilize these materials in a judicious manner for the production of advanced materials. That is the essence of my talk. If you look at my next slide, you can see I have listed various types of agro waste, sugar cane bagasse from sugar industry. Wheat bran and white bran, huge. Uh, I mean, waste. The other day, a professor from the University of North Carolina told me Delhi is very much polluted because the farmers burn the agricultural residues. He has made a systematic study about Delhi pollution. He said there's a big contribution from the burning of agricultural residues. And he was asking, lots of people listen to this talk. He was asking, why can't you transform this material into uh, when you are advanced functional structures. Look at the corn industry, lots of waste. Wheat industry, rice industry. So we have lots and lots of waste. If you look at Kerala, we have lots of lots of plantation of pineapple. After harvesting pineapple, we have lots of waste. Look at the banana plantation. After getting fruit, banana, we have lots of waste. So my essence of my talk is how to utilize this waste and transform them into advanced functional materials. So I have shown a few few slides on this. Look at if you look at this slide, you can see the worldwide production of agricultural waste, wood waste, uh, bamboo, uh, cotton. A variety of ways I have mentioned. I also mentioned the production, worldwide production. Wood is number one, followed by bamboo, followed by cotton, followed by a variety of jute. See. And these ways have to be utilized in a judicious manner to make advanced materials. Then you do the following circle economy. Next slide look at the plant fibers. Plant fibers are very beautiful materials. Environmentally friendly, benign materials. They are low cost, cost effective. At the moment, countries like India, China, Brazil, you know, the Indian continent, they are not well utilized, underutilized. Non abrasive to, uh, non abrasive to, we will make the sound better, non abrasive to uh, missionaries. So there are lots of lots of uh, positive attributes for plant fibers. If you look at my group in Mahatma Gandhi University, we have done a lot of work in my laboratory, utilizing the plant waste and transforming them into variety of nice products, electronic applications, automotive applications, building industry civil engineering, so we have lots and lots of collaborations utilizing these waste plant materials and transform them, them into value-added new advanced structures. My assistant, BFC, is taking care of the sound system and uh, Trying to focus it well. Okay, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear slight but vibrations. Not very, not very clear, right? Yes. Not yes. very clear. Hmm. Right.
Onde é que não? Dr. Susan, how many are listening to me? Mostly students or who are listening to me mainly? No, most of, most of them are assistant professors and oh, associate oh. professors. From your college? It, no, not only from our college, outside the college also, sir. Oh, right, right. And you are master students or BA students also or not? Your students also are meeting? Few, a few students are there. Four or five students are also okay. there. Okay. Of our MSc. Can, you, uh, can you hear me better now? Yes, we can hear you, but there are some vibrations, you know, the sound is not that clear. Hmm. How's it now? Better, sir. Better, okay, okay, okay. Yes, Thank sir. You. Now it's okay. clear. Okay, is it clear now? Uh, oh, uh, slightly better. Okay. How's it? Yes, sir. Okay. Same. 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 If you go to Malaysia, the plenty of oil palm companies there. Plenty of oil palm agricultural farms there. So they make part of the oil palm. Look at our coconut uh, industry in Kerala. A wide range of uh, companies manufacturing variety of products. And if you look at coconut industry, there are lots of ways it can be transformed into valuable material. We are working with coconut feet now. The next slide, what I want to show you is uh, what is the price of this material? If you take cotton as index of 100, you will find that these materials are relatively inexpensive. Look at straw, look at wool, look at fire, they're all inexpensive. And if you make a comparison with glass fiber, that's it. Similarly, part of natural fiber, a competitor of natural fiber, you will find this is natural fiber is much cheaper. Look at the physical mechanical properties, their chemical properties, their tensile properties, the modular, the elongation, the toughness. If you look at it, you will find that they are as good as the part of fibers. So they can compete with. Uh, glass fiber for a lot, so you can replace them very, very quite nicely. Look at the next one. What is this biomass material? If you look at the chemistry, you are all chemistry students. What is it teaching? If you look at the chemistry of the material, essentially they are, they are cellulose material. Look at this, such a cellulose. The third component is cellulose. The next component is chemicellulose. Bleeding. Therefore, they are. Probably they be called as lignocellulose. cellulose. And look at the structure of cellulose. The beautiful cellulose. So you can put lots of things in the surface. My book is the active chemical modification of cellulose. We can put different functionalities on the surface. In the coming slide, you will see some of these, some of these uh, modifications we have done in my laboratory. 
The next slide will show you the next slide will show you the bond structure. Look at the bond structure. See, you can work in different length scales. Look at the lowest length scale. That is nanometer length scale. Isn't it? See if you if you take out this, this is nano. Above this you have micro. And then you have It's not at all audible. You can hear now, right? Yes, sir. It's audible now. Okay. So uh, you can work in different landscapes. Can you hear now? No. Yes, sir. So you can work in different landscapes. Uh, macro landscapes. Uh, macro landscapes. And in nano lens. So today my talk is centered on basically on this nano structures. Look at this, this small, beautiful, small, very, very tiny fibers. They are all nano fibers. You know, one of my research group does at the university campus. We collect the plant waste now and we extract these nano fibers. Next time you see how we do that. We are we are quite expert by research group is has good expertise for the production of nano cells. We have a plant in the campus, a small plant in the campus, where you can be the raw material is the waste material from agro waste, we collect them, we do a chemical treatment and we make nano cellulose. And nanocellulose, you see, I made a statement here, strategic platform for sustainable development. It's a fantastic nanopedia. Better than the green, better than the better than the pros, better than the acidic. It's a wonderful material for sustainable development. And I mentioned some of the problems of this material, you know, high water quality capacity. Ah uh, yes, sir. It, it, we can hear, but uh, I need disturbance need. there. High strength, low density. Disturbances uh, are there, sir. High strength, only high aspect ratio. So these materials are fancy for this. Next slide. How do we produce this? There are different ways you can produce this. I mentioned all this technique for this high performance organization. Blind them, blind process. You do the crushing at low temperature, cryo crushing. Look at this. You can do acid hydrolysis, steam exposing process. Ultra-communication process, so there are many techniques by which you can make nanocellulose. Look at this. This is a wonderful nanocellulose. Uh, what we we'll do is I exit Lisa because my my assistant said we will try again because I will be
Es, es. Ahí no, ahí no, ahí no, ahí no. Ahí no, ahí no. Hello everyone. Because of the poor internet connection, Dr. Professor Thab uh, Sabu Thomas has been uh, uh, away from our Zoom platform for a while. Now he will rejoin immediately. He was talking about how nanotechnology tool uh, is used uh, for the sustainable development and especially from the agro waste like uh, 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 like you know coconut fiber the potato and tapioca peels and the pineapple peels and especially the rice bran as well as the wheat bran how these uh, agro waste which we considered as a waste and we used to throw and especially in Punjab you know that uh, stumble burning it happened during uh, the harvest and that would uh, that, that, that burning of that stumble would you uh, usually since last few years used to create air pollution also in the northern India, especially from Haryana, Punjab, Delhi, and Uttar Pradesh, that uh, we have witnessed uh, uh, two, three years back. Uh, but that same stumble, the same agro waste can be converted into a uh, into a nanotechnological tool. Nano can be converted into a nanoparticle. How how can it be used? Uh, in the case of uh, drug delivery, in the case of uh, scaffolding, in the case of uh, this is uh, what he was uh, mentioning, the same waste which considers a waste uh, can be converted into a useful uh, nano uh, nanoparticle and a nano composite in in fact it can be converted as a biomedical composite that was the talk he was um, uh, covering uh, during his section and now um, uh, like uh, i'll just uh, uh, we all will wait for a while so that he can um, uh, connect us back and join us and he can give elaborate uh, explanation about how this small uh, nanoparticle like this waste, uh, how uh, just now the slide which we are showing was explaining about how the starch, the starch and the, um, the cellulose and the uh, chitin which was uh, ex extracted from this biomaterial, the plant material, how it gets um, extracted and then uh, how, what would be the, its morphology and size of this particle and uh, through the various uh, instruments like SEMTEM, how one can uh, measure the size of this nanoparticle and how do we know that the, the, the material which made was nanoparticle. Uh, thank you, sir, has joined us uh, back. Now let, let us uh, see his uh, screen. So welcome back. Yes. Yes, sir. Welcome. Back. Can you all hear me now? Yeah, hey, definitely. Very clear, sir. Oh, very good. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so, I was trying to tell you how nanocellulose could be manufactured. There are different ways you can do. One is uh, grinding, homogenization process, cryo crushing, variety of ways you can make nanocellulose. I'll just very briefly tell you high pressure homogenization. You know what we do here is you take a slurry of cellulose and subject this to very high impact shear forces. When you apply high impact shear forces, you know what happens, you know? These shear forces decrease the size of fibrous nanoscale. That is what is high what pressure. Is high pressure. Very high pressure. Right. The second one is grinding. This was invented by the Japanese people, super grinding. 
you grind them using some sort of stones and because of shear again you apply very high shear because of shear you get nanoscale materials look at the picture the uh, super ground nanocellulose cryo crushing what you do is you go to very low temperature you freeze a sample using liquid nitrogen and then subject the material under high impact forces when you do that the cell walls are broken and you get beautiful and fibers this is called cryo crushing next one is high intensity ultrasonication process if you look at this process again you apply very high mechanical forces which is oscillating i mean uh, ultrasonic forces and during this ultrasonication process high intensive waves are applied and as a result of this you get nanoscale materials i will show you what we do in my laboratory we do steam explosion process we have a chamber like a pressure cooker you know you apply high pressure and temperature temperature of around 150 degrees celsius and pressure of very close to uh, 137 or 140 pascal under alkaline conditions you apply very high pressure and temperature and you suddenly release the pressure that is what is sudden explosion or steam explosion when you do such an explosion process what happen this is actually the macrocellulose it is broken down and you get beautiful nano crystals and the uh, lignin hemicellulose are dissolved by hydrolyzed by the uh, alkaline medium i have shown you a picture a sort of cartoon a sort of a small diagram this is our agriculture waste you get from the plantation it could be banana or it could be banana plantation or it could be Mm, cotton, or it could be, uh, uh, it could be pineapple, whatever it be, pineapple leaf. You do an alkali treatment. Then uh, you can remove lignin hemicellulose. You get a slurry. Then you do an acid hydrolysis, do an acid washing, and finally you get beautiful nanocellulose. Look at this. So we follow this step. I will show you a couple of slides. where you see the totality of the process you collect the cellulose waste you apply chemical treatment mechanical treatments you then you wash with acid it could be strong acid or a weak acid if you get a strong acid you get very small fibers you kill all the amorphous part uh, then you go for a dialysis to remove all the acid you wash with water homogenization and you get finally nanocellulose and the beauty of this material is look at the modulus of this material 130 gigapascal and strength is 10 gigapascal so it's a very uh, nice nano material of low aspect ratio regular shape uh, monocrystalline nature lots of fascinating properties i will show you some of the work which has been done by different research group If you look at the work of Muhammad and Group, 2015, Muhammad and Group, you know what they did? They took wood, and then they went for a strong acid, sulfuric acid treatment, 65 weight percent of sulfuric acid treatment at 45 degrees Celsius. Look at what they got. They got small nanofibers. Since they have used a strong acid, you know what happened? all this amorphous you see if you look at cellulose you have crystalline amorphous crystalline amorphous region when you use a strong acid it removes all the acid removes all the amorphous part and they could get small nano crystals if you use a weak acid or uh, less concentrated acid 10% 20% you know what you get you get long nano fibers so you are able to make either short nano crystals or long nanofibers 
I will show you our courses in MGU campus, in Mahatma Gandhi University campus. We have a steam explosion chamber. We pour an autoclave. And then we use this autoclave uh, for the manufacturing of nano cylinders. We use uh, alkalis and load the uh, autoclave with agricultural waste subject to the high pressure and temperature and then you suddenly release the pressure. You can see our uh, unit. This is the uh, agricultural waste we get from the, this is from banana plantation. These are autoclave. Uh, after autoclave, we do the bleaching process. And then we go for acid hydrolysis. It could be strong acid or light acid. Again, we subject them again to steam explosion process. We do it two, three times till we get nanostructures. Look at one of my PhD students, Yeldu Abraham, made beautiful nanostructures. He's right now in the US doing a postdoc. I also wanted to show you the, the, uh, the, 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 the composition of this fiber. The waste that we get from the plantation, this is actually banana plantation. You know, the, the amount of cellulose is 64, hemicellulose is 18, and lignin is 4.9%. When you do a steam explosion process, you increase cellulose standard. You wash away semi-cellulose and lignin. After bleaching, you see, look at this. We got almost 90% of cellulose. We could remove lots of hemicellulose and lignin. So in some cases, we could attain up to 99% of cellulose. Okay? So we have a lot of expertise in doing this in our laboratory. Look at the work of Bibin. Uh, he's now in Brazil. He made a beautiful nano cellulose from banana stock. These are the sizes. If you look at the width of this nano fiber, the thickness or diameter of this fiber in the range of 30 or 35 nanometer, and the length is a bit longer. Length this could be around uh, 200 or 150 nanometer. I will show you another slide where we had a very strong cooperation with the Sweden. Lulia University, we had an India-Swedish joint project. So my PhD student went to Sweden. Sweden has lots of wood flower, wood waste, a country with a lot of forest. So we did lots of nice uh, extraction from wood flower. You see, my PhD student made nanocellulose uh, from wood waste. Look at our Brazilian work. Bibin has gone to South Polo. We have a cooperation with South Polo. Look at the nanofiber just made from banana leaves. I wanted to show you another important slide. Once you make this nanocellulose, it's a very simple process. Anybody can do it. But the beauty of nanocellulose is you can do a lot of chemistry on this. So where the role of chemists, look at the structure of nanocellulose, your beautiful hydroxyl groups. So you can do tempo mediated oxidation process. These oils could be transformed into COINA. Look at this. You can do esterification process. You can do polymer grafting. Polymers could be grafted on the surface of cellulose. You can do fluorescent labeling. You can do cationization. You can do cellulation. So you can do lots and lots of chemistry on the surface of these nanocellulose by making use of these functional hydroxyl groups. While doing this, you can transform these waste material into excellent wound healing tape. You all must be using a tape when you have a small wound. See, we can make such wound healing tape. We can make water purification membranes. We can make sensors. We can make EMI shielding materials for electronic applications. So my research group is active in all these areas. We are able to make water purification filters. I will show you a PhD student of mine. Right now he's in France doing a postdoc, Dibu. What he did is he extracted cellulose from agro waste. 
from pineapple waste. Okay. Then what he did is he made a trialer filter. Look at the manufacturing we have done. This is actually a non-woven microfiber support. You can buy from the market. These two we can buy from the market. See, we bought this from the market. Then we actually made we made a coating of nanocellulose on the surface. This is a hydrophilic coating. So the base is nothing but non-oven microfiber support. It could be PO or it could be PVA or it could be PHB. And then you have a nanofiber support. This is electrospun system. This you can buy from the market. And you can see the nanofiber, electrospun nanofiber. It could be PVDF. On the top of this, you know what we have done? We have sprayed the nanocellular suspension. While doing this, you can make excellent filters. You will see the filtering action. Debu did one more thing. Uh, Dr. Debu, what he did is he did a small chemistry on the surface. That's the beauty of this. Look at this. This is a structure of cellulose, nano cellulose. And I've shown only one hydroxyl group. What sort of chemistry we have done? We have rea reacted this with the meltrum acid. A beautiful green chemistry group. And Debu could introduce CO to OH group on the surface of these nanocellulose. So specifically, he put a lot of negative charge on the nanocellular surface by putting COH group. And effectively, what, what really happened is, I can show you the slide. Look at, this is the filter that you get from the market, the water purification filter. So Debu tried to remove some of the dyes in water. Kumaron in Indian dye, CI dyes. See, this is the absorption capacity of the membrane as a function of time. This is a commercial filter that you get. But if you just spray the top of the filter with nanocellulose, look at this. The filtration efficiency has been increased. If you spray with chemically modified nanocellulose with the carboxyl group, look at this. The, the filtration efficiency has been Fantastic. You might ask why Dibu was given a beautiful, uh, beautiful cartoon. So this is how this is a commercial filter that you get from. This is the uh, filter that you get from the market. And then what we did is we modified the filter with nanocellulose. Look at after filtration, all these dye molecules have been sort of retained on the top. How this is possible? When you do a chemical modification with nanocellulose, this is chemically modified nanocellulose with adoption groups or with the COH groups. You have a negative group. This is a dye, crystal violet dye. This is a positive charge. And there could be electrostatic interaction between the modified filter and the top. And because of this electrostatic interaction, all the dye molecules were caught by the membrane. And that is why, look at the filtration efficiency, it's quite good. So we made quite nice membrane. Those who are really interested can look at our publication, ACS, Sustainable Chemistry Engineering. Look at the Chinese group. Chinese group also was quite active, Professor Mayan group. Mayan group, that was, they did some, some work in 2011. Mayan group made use of commercial filter. This is a commercial filter from the market. What they did is they also tried to remove uh, crystal violet dye, CV dyes. See, look at the performance they've got. This is cellulose nanoviscular membrane. This commercial membrane has been coated with nanocellulose. Look at the filtration efficiency. Absorption capacity has been increased remarkably. Look at this is the, uh, the impure water, this is the pure water. After filtration, they could remove all the dyes. Debu and I, we also did something interesting further. What we did is, you know, water has a lot of suspended particles. It could be metal oxides, it could be iron oxide, there are a lot of suspended particles in the water. Water is highly contaminated. So we checked whether we can remove the suspended particle in water. We use the same technique. 
we made the membrane and this membrane has been utilized to remove suspended particles we filtered the, the water through this membrane look at all the particles were these are all suspended particles on the top of the membrane these are all suspended particles all the suspended particles were retained at the top of the membrane look at the bottom part of the membrane which is electrospun nothing very clear membrane you can see and you also wanted to see the transmission under uh, uv transmission look at this Trans transmission is almost 100% for the filtrate impure water look at impure water is highly contaminated with the uh, particles look at there's no transmission so we are able to remove suspended particle in water using membrane which is modified with nanocellulose made from agricultural waste now i wanted to show you some very nice work of korhonen and group in finland their group is very active we also learned something from their group finland group was also here in my laboratory for a conference you know what they did probably you all know that sea water is increasingly contaminated with oil a lot of oil spillage you might be reading in the newspaper so the finnish group you know what they did they made aerogel out of nanocellulose simple process you take aerogel and water and you go for a freeze drying you get beautiful aerogel lightweight then they sprinkle this aerogel in the sea water when you do that look at this this is the oil all the oil particles were absorbed by the aerogel you might ask a question if you are a chemist you might ask a question how these uh, a uh, cellulose can absorb oil oil is hydrophobic cellulose is hydrophilic you know what they did the finnish group did they did a, something very interesting they made the surface cellulose surface hydrophobic by tio2 coating when you do a tio2 coating titanium dioxide coating on the surface of this nanocellulose the surface becomes hydrophobic so the all oil in the sea is absorbed by this spongy material water cannot enter because water is hydrophilic so they made this is this is the tio2 coating look at this tio2 coating 7 nanometer coating they gave and ultimately what happened all the oil was absorbed by this foam which is made of nanocellulose and then you know they you can remove it you can crush it and take out the oil or you can burn it so finish group is commercialized now this is one way of removing oil from water from sea nanocellulose is also an exciting material for metal absorption metals could be absorbed but there again you need some chemistry you cannot simply use cellulose cellulose is hydrophilic you know the group in china what they did is they put a small chemistry on the surface they treated nanocellulose with polyvinylamine when you do that when do when you do that chemistry you can put lots of positive charge on the surface of nanocellulose when you react with the polyvinylamine you can put a lot of amino group on the surface look at the absorption of chromium the chromium would be absorbed when you filter the water through this filter so chromium absorption is become very very efficient when you filter and dominate the water the chromium similarly you can remove nickel we can remove cadmium we can remove lead many contaminants in water could be removed here again a very interesting slide of uh, uh, professor kadaman and group from europa you know what they did they made rice straw fiber they did not do much of chemical modification rice straw fiber they took and see the removal of nickel cellulose fibers not nano scale micro fibers look at nano nano is much more efficient simple straw you can use you might be uh, knowing that in olden days people used to use straw and charcoal for filtering water simple straw is good for filtering water but not as efficient as nano so you can remove nickel you can remove cadmium you can remove lead so many suspended metal particles 
could be removed from water now we are all facing the pandemic of bacteria and virus this is a virus pandemic now we are facing corona virus i submitted three four proposals uh, uh you know to dst dbt and one to uh, i mean uh, uh, india us program to make new filters to make new mask i will i also show you a couple of slides on this see bacteria and virus could be removed using nano cellulos i will show you maybe one or two slides you see look at this look at this filter bacteria size is much bigger so if you just filter the water through this filter this filter hole is so small it can remove bacteria by size exclusion principle because the the whole size this filter is small so bacteria cannot pass through the water will flow bacteria will be retained by the filter but the case of virus is not possible virus is so small look at corona virus the size in the range of 100 nanometer 120 nanometer if you have viruses like corona virus you see then you have to do a chemical treatment on the fiber surface you know the the group what they have done is they have done polyvinylamine group that means you can put positive charge on the surface of nano cells amino group you know all these viruses have a sort of i mean a, a shell of negative charge because of protein coating so these viruses will be held by this positively charged nano cells by electrostatic interaction so you so this is one way of removing viruses you treat nano cells with polyvinylamine you put amino group and viruses could be trapped by electrostatic interaction because virus has a negative charge on the surface corona virus too look at the water filtration efficiency you see look at this is logarithmic uh, i mean removal of viruses fantastic removal all of viruses so you can remove virus you can remove bacteria from water using nano cellulose made from where made, made from agricultural waste by a simple process this is again a very exciting material a gentleman is suffering from high degree of burning of space and his face is covered with nano cellulose and nano cellulose is extremely porous once you cover the wound at face with nano cellulose the cell growth is dramatic so the 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 uh, the cells can grow pretty rapidly so this is an excellent stuff for for uh, biomedical applications i will now show you something we did with a brazilian group in sao paulo we have a cooperation with the sao paulo where we work with the nano cellulose and polyurethane our sao paulo group is very active in making hot water this is a this is actually polyurethane medical grade polyurethane manufactured by the uh, brazilian group look at the strength of the material 17.5 37.5 yeah, so a student of mine went to brazil he made nano cellulose from uh, from pineapple look at he put he went to brazil and mixed nano cellulose with polyurethane 2% 5% when you put 5% look at the strength of material 52.6 and uh, modulus is 992.4 dr susan can you hear me yes very clear sir yes and you see 10% also gave almost a similar value and he said 5% is good you know finally what we did my group and brazilian group made nano cellulose polyurethane prostate heart valve see we made some something very interesting from the waste banana uh, leaf waste and we made heart valve we have a series of patent with them and we usually we also published a few papers too now let me show you some of the work we done with wound healing look at nano cellulose for wound healing applications this type of material you can make why this is important for wound healing is extremely porous this is a wound and this wound could be closed by this nano cellulose i want to show you some nice work of uh, from the group in uh, in uh, spain uh, from sebastian moritz sebastian moritz you know what they did they made wound uh, healing mattresses so this is this is the mattress they made They made aerogel. 
by freeze drying. So this is the material they've made, very lightweight. And then they incorporated an antibiotic into this, this uh, foamy material. And then they looked at the profile, look at the beautiful sustained release of antibiotic. And it was as good as a, as good as a standard material approved by uh, NIH. So they said that nanocellulose is a very good material for drug delivery purposes. You make nanocellulose uh, base by freeze drying process, then introduce your antibiotic and antibiotic biotic could be released in a very sustained manner. Again, let me show you another work, the Chinese group, Professor Lu and group, you know what they did. Professor Lu and group, they made nanocellulose from wood flour, wood powder. And then they did a small chemistry. They made nanocellulose collagen composites. Collagen is a very interesting material. And they made aerogel by freeze drying. All the chemists might know what is freeze drying. Nanocellulose collagen composite was made, extremely light. This is very biocompatible because you have collagen there. And he said, Professor Lu said, this is an ex excellent material for wound dressing. Wound would be dressed using this material and you have excellent tissue growth, tissue regeneration, angiogenesis. Nanocellulose is also an exciting material for reinforcing membranes. I'll show you one or two slides. You see, there are lots of membranes in the market. So this is a typical membrane of polyacrylonitrile. All the membranes that you get in the market, they have a problem. You know what is the problem? Their mechanical strength is very weak. So Professor Kao from, the, uh, from Japan said, you can, you, can, you can reinforce them. See, this is a typical pan membrane, but weak mechanics. Just strain, look at this. Weak. But if you just coat with nanocellulose one side, look at the strain goes up. If you coat both sides of the membrane with the nanocellulose, it becomes a strong material. So Professor Kawa said, nanocellulose, again, a very interesting material to reinforce membrane that you get from the market. See, again, a waste has been transformed into an exciting reinforcing material for, for different types of membranes. I will show you what we have done during Corona time. We have submitted a big Indo-US Indo program uh, with, the, with the University of the United States in Georgia Tech. Some of you might have heard about this university, a good university in the US. Uh, Georgia Tech, in my group, and a couple of other groups in Kerala, and one group in Assam, we made a proposal during COVID time. The proposal was submitted almost one and a half months back. We made a tri-layer mask. The mask you, you, that you're wearing could be two layers or three layers or six layers. The mask I am wearing now, six layer mask. The black one is a six layer mask. So we propose a three layer mask, simple mask. The outer layer is made of nylon, or it could be made of uh, polyester. But this is a very basic thing. That means coronavirus could be repelled by this substance. See, corona cannot come here. Look at it. If at all some virus get in, you have a middle layer. This middle layer, again, it could be nylon or polyester, but coated with nanocellulose with a positive charge. A little bit curcumin. Since nanocellulose has positive charge, it will catch this virus. Virus has a, a protein layer on the surface, which is negatively charged. So it can kill the virus. It can deactivate the virus. And the last layer of this mask is cotton, which is very close to your mouth. So this is a structure we have given. You see our mask construction for the Indo-US program. This is the outer layer, which is an anti-adhesive coating with the polyelectrolyte coating and silver which is made of polyester. The middle layer is made of nylon, but you have nanocellulose chemically modified with a positive charge. We also put some, uh, some uh, curcumin here. Curcumin is also antiviral. 
and the innermost layer is cotton, which is should be a cofinal. So this is the concept. This is a proposal we have submitted. We are waiting for the funding. We are not sure whether it is accepted or not. So we during the COVID time we submitted many proposal. One such proposal was this construction of a new mask, which can really uh, prevent the virus entry into your body. Anyway, this is also some construction of the mask. I will skip this. Let me show you the next slide. Nanocellulose is a good material for sensors. I'll show you maybe a couple of slides, quoting some of the Chinese work. Look at this, Wang and group in China. You know what they did? They made nanocellulose. CNC is nanocellulose. CNT is carbon nanotube. They mix CNC and CNT together. Look at this. They went for a sonication process and then mixed with the natural latex. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the rubber latex. Mixed with rubber latex, they mixed them together and made a composite. The beauty of this material, you can see in the next slide, this is nanocellular suspension in water. Very light nanocellular suspension. And this suspension is kept for 24 hours. You don't see any you don't see any uh, settling down of nanoparticles, very stable. And you can see the theta potential of this. But if you take carbon nanotube in water, zero hour, 24 hours. After 24 hours, the whole carbon nanotube actually getting settled down. You see, unstable. But look at nanocellulose, which you get from the nature. It's very, very stable. You know what Professor Wang and group did? They try to understand if you mix them together, what will happen? Nanocellulose and CNT together. So Professor Wang and group took a 50-50 ratio, nanocellulose and CNT together. You see, it is very, very stable. Doesn't settle down the mixer. So Professor Wang and group suggested that when you mix them together, you can make wonderful material. So Professor Wang and group put this into natural rubber. Look at this. CND, CNC, CND, carbon nanotube and nanocellulose together. Excellent dispersion, excellent dispersion. You see, if you CND alone, you have lots and lots of aggregation process. So, Professor Wang and group indicated that if you mix CND, carbon nanotube and nanocellulose together, you can get beautiful nanocomposites. I request all of you to look at this slide. Conductivity as a function of CND concentration. You know, when you put CND or graphene to a polymeric material, you can get percolation process. Look at the conductivity jump. This is what percolation becomes extremely conductive. You can make a natural rubber a conductive rubber. You know what my PhD students do? They put CND into natural rubber and you can make conductive rubber, conductive elastic bands. But this is CND alone, you get a percolation here. But look at CND and CNC, nanocellulose together. You can have percolation at a very low concentration. So percolation threshold, threshold could be shifted to very low concentration of CND. CND is a very expensive material. So one can make electrically conductive material. Conductive rubbers you can make. I will skip all the slides. I will show you the next one. This is again something we did uh, in cooperation with uh, in cooperation with Slovenia. A PhD student, we have a Slovenian cooperation going on. A PhD student of mine went to Slovenia as part of his PhD. He had a European fellowship. Look at this is cellulose nanofiber. He has made from agriculture waste, made in my lab. Then he went to Slovenia with his fiber. And what he did, he actually doped graphene oxide on the cellulose fiber. This is cellulose nanofiber with nitrogen dwarf graphene oxide. And you can see this uh, uh, electron microscopy picture of this dwarf material. The advantage is very interesting. Look at the energy storage. This is dielectric constant as a function of frequency. This is nanocellulose alone. But when you dwarf with graphene oxide, the dielectric constant goes up. That means this platform is an excellent energy storage device. So we made such beautiful, excellent energy storage uh, base for uh, several applications. 
Next slide will show you how we made aerogel. Aerogel for EMI shielding applications or anode for lithium ion batteries, super capacitors. I will show you a couple of slides. Uh, Professor Lipping and Group, you know what they did? Uh, Professor Lipping and Group, they made aerogel from nanocell. Simple process. You go for a freeze drying, you get aerogel. So this is aerogel made by them. You know what Professor uh, Wang did? Professor Wang, you know what he did is, he went for pyrolysis. At what temperature? 900 degrees Celsius. They went for a pyrolysis process at 900 degrees Celsius. And they got beautiful carbon material. And they said this carbon is an excellent material for uh, the excellent material for uh, lithium ion batteries. So they made lithium ion electrode, you know, anode material for lithium ion for, from this waste material. I will show you something uh, my PhD student did in 2018. Now he's a postdoc in France. So he made nanocellulose from agricultural waste. Then what uh, Dibu Gopakumar did is he went for uh, Polymerization of aniline on the surface of nanocellulose. You put aniline and polymerize in situ polymerization. Look at this. This is the material we have made. Very simple process. Very simple chemistry in the lab. You can see the totality of the process he has done. He has taken a, a flask and taken nanocellulose solution in this, injected aniline, went for uh, in situ polymerization of aniline, and then went for a vacuum filtration, then for a pressing, hot pressing. Look at what he has made. He's made light paper. Nanocellulose, conductive paper. Why this paper is black? Because we polymerize aniline on the surface of nanocellulose. You know the beauty of this material? You can see the electron microscopy picture. This is neat nanocellulose. This is uh, uh, in-situ polymerized graphene nanocellulose. So in-situ polymerized polyaniline nanocellulose. And the beauty of this material is, look at this, is extremely flexible, like a sponge. And it is conductive. Look at this. We look at the conductive of the material. And finally, what we did is, we made EMI shielders. So we have a series of patent and a few publications. We made EMI shielders. See, starting from waste, we made a fantastic EMI shielding material. And EM, we made a different thickness, 0.75 mm, 1 mm thickness paper. And we could make beautiful different types of EMI shielders. We are also active in the area of chitin, chitosan. You know, because Kerala has lots of seafood industry. So we collect all this chitin material. And what we do is, this is a structure of uh, chitin, uh, I mean, structure. We have a beautiful NSCO CS3 crew, excellent platform for uh, uh, water purification, many applications. And from this seafood waste, like agro waste, you feed when acid washing, you can make nano materials. Look at this nano crystals we made from uh, crab shell. These are, these are all nice nano materials. I don't understand so much of chemistry of this very simple process. I will show you just a couple of work. You know, Professor Yang and group in China, what they did is they made nanochitin from crab shell or the shell of the prawn. And then they made a small chemistry on this. They introduced, uh, they introduced, uh, I mean, uh, some sort of thiol group on the surface of this material. And if you do that, you can remove this called chitin. This is neat chitin. This is chitin cysteine modification. If you do such modification, you can tag metals. You remove arsenic. Arsenic is a contaminant for water. So you can remove arsenic and such material. Look at Professor Wang made, Professor Yang made beautiful filters for removal of arsenic. Similarly, you can modify nano chitin. This is a structure of chitin. Uh, another group, Huang, from again China. This is a structure of chitin. You know what they did? They put a lot of hydrophobic groups on the surface of chitin. See, look at 
and one can control the number of arms. These are all the hydrophobic group. You see? Uh, by controlling the chemistry, you can control the number of arms. You know what uh, Professor Huang did? Huang made a series of beautiful material. This is the neat chitin. When you put hydrophobic groups, you know, look at the water contact angle. Professor Huang made super hydrophobic surfaces. By a simple chemistry, they put a lot of hydrophobic groups on the surface of chitin, and he made super hydrophobic surfaces. Initial contact angle of uh, neat uh, chitin is 86, and that has become 158.2 contact angle. So super hydrophobic surfaces have been made by Huang and group with a small chemistry. I will show you something we did, again with Slovenia, a PhD student of mine went to Slovenia, then he made nanochitin in my lab. He combined with PVDF. PVDF is a commercial filter. If you use a commercial filter, PVDF, this is a removal of dye, indigo keramine dye. Look at, this is PVDF, uh, removal of dye is 23%. Uh, dye absorption is 25%. But if you combine with nanochitin, you see the dye removal efficiency has been enhanced dramatically, something like four times increase. Combining PVD of the commercial filter with nanochitin. So we got fantastic results for removal of dye from water. The last part of my slide is we also have a lot of agro waste starch material. You go to a paddy field, you go to a tapioca field, you go to a uh, potato field, there are a lot of waste material which cannot be used. We are not touching the, uh, the food sector, the human being and animal. We are touching only the waste material. So, cassava, tapioca, this is again a very simple starting material for nanoparticles. You do an acid washing. Then you can get nanocrystals of starch. I want to show you the nice work of Dufresne from France. He made nanocrystals of starch from potato, potato waste. We made something very similar from tapioca waste. And finally, I wanted to show you one slide, a PhD student of mine. Uh, she, what she did is, uh, her name is uh, Rajisha. Look at this, this is neat natural rubber. And Rajisha incorporated nanocrystals of potato starch. See, these are all nanocrystal products. Put it in natural level latex and remove water by evaporation process and Rajisha made beautiful films. Look at the strength of the material. This is neat natural level. This is natural level with 20% of nanocrystals of starch. The strength of 2 or 2.5 MBA became almost 14, 14.5. 14 so we made very strong natural rubber composite by putting nanocrystals from waste potato, extracted uh, nanocrystals from waste. We, we also did similar thing with tapioca. And finally, I wanted to tell you that agro waste will be transformed into advanced function material. You have to really follow uh, the uh, so-called economy process. Whatever waste we care, it is actually, it's actually wealth transform them into value-added material. All agricultural waste of plant origin could be transformed into nanocellulose. And you see the application, water purification, wound healing, energy storage, EMI shielding. All seafood waste could be transformed into beautiful chitin materials. Good application for as a reinforcing filler, water purification, heavy metal removal. Start could be transformed into nanocrystal lots and lots of applications and we have to really make a zero waste planet for our next generation and sustainability should be the slogan of the whole nation the whole world and we have to preserve our ecosystem for the coming generations and i would like to thank all my 
PhD students, many of them have left me now. They're all different countries. Uh, government funding, particularly for Susana Rao, for the generous funding for the Nano Mission, I got very close to 20 crores of funding. ISRO, CSAR, DBT, AICD. I request all my colleague, I mean, colleague teachers, there are a lot of funding in this country. Submit good proposals. You can get a lot of funding. I got very close to 30 crores from all this agency. International collaboration, France, PICS project, India, Sweden, India, Slovenia, TWS, India, Brazil, DuPont US, a chemical, uh, chemical company, General Cables US, Surface Street, Czech Republic. I have many, many collaborators, star companies. And you see, look at, we have many, many collaborators, uh, professors from different countries. You name any country, at least I have at least 10 people, good collaborators. Brazil, uh, I mean, Sweden, uh, Africa, so many countries we have collaborators. They all helped me to do good science. And this is my group in chemistry. So you are all welcome to my laboratory, my chemical chemistry group, and uh, Professor Alan, uh, Professor E was visiting us. This is me, and this is Rajisha. And uh, you know, many of them left now. I have to put a new photograph. This is our group in nanoscience. Now my nano center is headed by Professor Aranda Kumar, so Nanda Kumar, and this is our nano center. And uh, those who are not visited me, Susan is from Kerala, so you can visit me in Kerala, our laboratory. Our laboratory in Kerala, very welcome to my campus. And you can also do a good boating. Maybe Susan and takes your students to, uh, to Kerala and visit my laboratory. We have a beautiful houseboat. We have, uh, you know, after COVID, you can come. Uh, we have very nice temples, Tatakali, Mohiniyattam. And this is our university. This is the front gate of the university. I'm sitting in this campus. We have three campuses. This is the main campus of 100 acres. This is chemistry and nano center. And uh, we have a conference coming up, 100 years of macromolecular science. You know, the macromolecules were uh, uh, the philosophy of the hypothesis of macromolecules introduced in 1920 by the Nobel laureate German scientist, chemist, Hermann Stodinger. So we are celebrating 100 years. 1920, the concept was introduced. Before nine, 1920, nobody believed the existence of macromolecules. So we are celebrating the 100 years of macromolecular science. So we have a webinar. 11, 12, and 13. Now is international webinar. We'll have a lot of, I mean, people from abroad also speaking at this conference. And I'm also an editor of this journal. Uh, when I was introduced, nano structures and nano objects. The the side score, sides, the side score of this material is sorry. This journal is now 5.6. So I want to build an impact factor of close to 10. That is my dream. This is a traditional journal, no pay charges. It's a traditional journal of uh, LCM. So thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Susan, for the kind invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the ins insightful speech, sir. Now it's a question answer time. Let me invite uh, my uh, co-conveners, Dr. Rajivi John, Dr. Mohammad Anis, Dr. Anida Vikyanand, Dr. Mr. Pravin Tyagi, Mr. Ramkumar Saraswat, Dr. Padma Hazra, Dr. David Mercy, and Dr. Mahima Habil Mercy to uh, ask questions. Thank you, sir, for a very informative and excellent presentation. There is a question from Dr. Amita Sarkar. Uh, Sir, are homeopathic medicines nanoparticles? Her question is, are homeopathic medicines nanoparticles? It's a very interesting question. You see, some day back, uh, a homeo doctor came to my laboratory and uh, he wanted to utilize my uh, our electron microscope and the dynamic light scattering. And uh, he came and uh, uh, examined lots of Ayurvedic formulations uh, under high resolution electron microscope. And we found beautiful nanoparticles in these Ayurvedic formulations. And I strongly feel that um, one of the reasons for the high activity of uh, homeopathic medicine under extreme dilution could be due to the presence of extremely fine nanostructures. As you all know, nanostructures are very high 
surface to volume ratio, they are extremely active. That could be one of the reasons why Ayurveda, sorry, allopathic medicines, are, sorry, uh, homeopathic medicines are so good, so active. So I think we have to do lots of research on this, take different types of formulations, different dilutions, and examine. So we did some work with a home, a home doctor, homeopathic doctor, and he also published it in a very nice journal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. More questions are coming up. Then there is. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, sir, for your good presentation. And Thank you, Dr. Anila. Yes. There is a question uh, from Rajul Kulshresht. Can sugarcane waste be used as a replacement for making roads? Making? Roads. Road, road. Oh, okay. Road. Okay, okay. Yes. You see, sugarcane, bagasse is rich of cellulose. You can just powder it and utilize for... Uh, the purpose of making a uh, road, you can use it, definitely. And you can you see, two ways you can use, you can make microcellulose and you can use them for charring roads. Yes. Good material. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Mohammed Anis, any questions, sir? Mr. Praveen Thiagi, Ram Kumar, sir, Dr. David, hello? yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. hello, hello. You are audible. Hello, I am audible. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very, very, very good, excellent lecture given by you. And on cellulose, uh, we think gone from very simple uh, structure you have uh, from nano cellulose particles which are very so used. I want to know, sir, is, uh, are these marks, yellow cellular marks, are uh, maybe available in the market? Hello? May I, am I audible? Yes, no. Can you repeat the Hello? question? Can you repeat? Um, I want to... Uh, I want to know, sir, uh, the marks you have prepared from yellow cellulose, marks hmm. for COVID-19. Oh, yeah, okay, the marks, the marks. The mask. Okay. Yeah. See, what... Uh, are these yes. marks may be available in the market? No, 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 not yet, not yet. This is the proposal. <laughs> not yet. This is the Indo. Okay, the proposal. proposal. They submitted. Yes. So once oh. we get the funding, we will definitely make this mask. The trilayer mask. Okay. The outer layer is a polyelectrolyte coating, okay. which is made of uh, polyester layer. The middle layer is nylon, but nylon engraved with nanocellulose with the positive particle, and the inner layer is made yes. of cotton. Once we get the funding, we will make this mask and we will start commercial production. We have an industrial company also along with us in this project. Yes. Okay. Did you understand the philosophy of this mask? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Very nicely presented the topic. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. And sometimes their audio uh, problems are presented there, but your slides is there, so we can understand them very well and your presentation very well. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank I have you. a question Sorry. to ask. Yes, Dr. David, yeah. Uh, very good, good evening, sir. So the masks you have proposed, which you're going to make when the funding is provided, will they be more beneficial than the N95 or 99 comparison to? If they come in production, yeah, you see, if you look at N95, the efficiency of filtration efficiency is 95 percent. N99 is there. There are different types of masks. See, our masks have a very special construction. N95, N99, they have a sort of filtration efficiency. Their holes are so small. So our mask is very special. The outer layer has a polyelectrolyte coating, so it will repel the coronavirus. And the middle layer will kill the coronavirus because the middle layer has uh, positively charged nanocellulose with turmeric, you know. And the innermost layer is coated. So this is quite different from the uh, 
normal N95, N99 mask, they're all uh, work on the principle of filtration efficiency. But our mask is actually chemically modified mask. N95 and uh, N99, they're all actually filtration efficient. They're very, very small holes so that the coronavirus cannot get in. The size of a coronavirus virus is something like, you know, uh, 200 or 150 nanometer, but they sort of, they have a sort of water molecule around. So it's slightly bigger than this. So, you know, they can filter out. N95 or N99 can filter out. But N95 and N99 cannot kill them. So our mask can kill coronavirus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I hope this mask comes out soon and we will see it reality. Sure. <laughs> Right, sir. Any other question? But we hope, sir, that... Uh, uh, Hello, can you repeat? Sir, ma'am, I have one question. Oh, yes. yes, yes, you can ask. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice, informative talk, sir. Uh, Thank my you, Mahima. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, can nanoscience contribute to control uh, environmental pollution exposure beside uh, masks? Nanotechnology is a very big area for environmental remediation. You know, what purification of air, purification of water, purification of soil. You see, if you look at... Um, uh, chitin and chitosan, nanochitin, the excellent platform for removing heavy metals from water, from soil. Uh, sea water, you can remove oil. So nanotechnology is an excellent platform for environmental remediation process. Your, uh, your, your question is correct. It's an excellent platform. You have to engineer the right material for the right application. So beside uh, membranes, what else uh, are the uses? Besides membrane, what you can you what you can utilize is you can you can check metal ions. You know, you know metal ions by different processes. You can use for agriculture purposes. You can use. Uh, uh, slow release. See, I have a program with Russia. We, we, we want a mega grant with Russia. So what we do is, we work with Russian people in Siberia. You know what we do? We make slow release fertilizers. Slow release specifiers. We have to use only very small amount of fertilizer. It is slowly released because we give a coating. Similarly, pesticides. Once you use a very small amount of pesticide, the soil will not be contaminated. So sustained release of fertilizer, sustained release of drugs, sustained release of uh, pesticide is a good way of preserving our ecosystem. The sustained release is good for controlling the environment. So variety of variety of applications. Any other questions? I think no more questions from the participants and no more questions from the conveners. So let's wind up this program with a uh, word of thanks. On behalf of organizing committee, I would like to express heartfelt gratitude to Professor S. P. Singh, sir, whose constant support and tireless efforts made this webinar reach newer heights in every week. So thank you for your visionary outlook and mission thank you so much. Thank to, you. to make the college to a new height. We thank our honorable uh, Vice Chancellor of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar University, Dr. Ashok Mittal. He is a patron, a chief patron of this webinar. Thank you very much for your, sir, the blessings and uh, and wishes uh, to keep this uh, webinar every week alive and uh, on behalf of this organizing committee i would like to express a heartfelt gratitude to professor sabu thomas uh, vice chancellor mahatma gandhi university kottayam kerala for your thought provoking uh, webinar uh, address and also throwing insights into the 
upcoming research field of green chemistry tool that is nanotechnology for sustainable development. So through your address, uh, we could you could enable us to understand the utility of agro waste, the circular economy, and the bio waste like potato peels and the tapioca peels to produce nanoparticles and nano cellulose with a well-defined chemical composition, morphology, and chemical, uh, electro, uh, chemical properties. So it, it can be used for UX, it can be used for water purification system, it can be used to remove not only suspended particles, but also heavy metal from this, especially nickel, cobalt, and uh, uh, copper uh, from uh, uh, the water. And uh, you also mentioned about the cellulose starch and chitin nanoparticle and the nanocomposite can act as a biomedical composites for drug and gene delivery and especially nano scaffolds uh, in uh, tissue engineering and cosmetic orthodontic. So we are highly grateful uh, for enlightening us with this, the, the new topic of bio waste utility in biomedical app appliances as well as in water chemistry. So in spite of your busy schedule, so you spent valuable time with Department of Chemistry, St. John's College, Agra. We are really inducted. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you very much, On, on behalf Thank of our organizing you very much, committee, I would like to express sincere thanks to participants from various colleges and universities, and also to our technical team, especially uh, Mr. Sandeep Nayak, for uh, conducting this uh, webinar without a technical glitch. Let me thank my co-conveners, my colleagues of my Department of Chemistry, Dr. Raju Vijan, Dr. Mohammad Anis, Dr. Anada VK Anand, uh, Mr. Praveen Tyagi, Mr. Ram Kumar Saraswad, uh, uh, Dr. Patma Hazra, and uh, Dr. David Danish Mercy and Dr. Mahima Habil Mercy for the cooperation and the constant support to this, make this webinar successful every week. And finally, I thank each one of you for being with us on this webinar lecture series. Then. Thank you, everyone. Namaskar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.